going to learn how to deploy a UI integration card in your business site. Now in the last video, we had seen how to create a simple UI5 integration card of the type list. This card had retrieved the invoices information from the publicly available Northwind O data services and displayed it in a list card. But we had only created and previewed the card in the application studio. Uh, in this video, we will be focusing on how to package this card into a content package and then deploy it to your business site that has been built using the build work zone. So then the card becomes available for all your business end users. Now, when we want to deploy a UI5 integration card in the build work zone, the most important development artifact that we are going to need is called as the content package. The content package is basically the container that is going to carry your uh, UI5 integration card. So let's start by creating the content package in the business application studio. And this time to speed things up, I will be using the template wizard that has been provided to us. So open up the template wizard and then scroll down to content package. Let's click on start. Let's put in a project name. Now, um, Keep in mind that the length of the project name, including the namespace, should not be longer than 20 characters. So let's try to keep it short and provide in a namespace. I'm going to use the same namespace that I had used for my uh, UI5 integration card, which is com.dunk. The subtitle is optional and include content samples. Let's set it to false and then click on finish. We get the project folder created for us. Now notice there is a manifest.json file here as well. Now do not confuse this with the manifest.json file that we had created for the integration card. This manifest.json is specific for the content package. We also have the i18n folder, and this is of course for the translation of the text elements. And then we have a content.json file. Now this file will be used to specify all the content that this package is going to contain or this package is going to hold. If we click on the name of the file, we see that this is initially empty. Now a, a content package can be used to bring in different content types into your uh, business site. So you can of course pack a, a UI5 integration card within it, but you can also put in other artifacts such as roles, spaces, um, pages, etc. And then you don't need to create them uh, within the build work zone. So it's like a complete package of all that you need to successfully run an application from your business site. So now let's go ahead and specify the content that we are going to have in our content package. Now we will of course be putting in our UI5 integration card, but we will also be adding a role for it. The way to specify content in our content.json file is by utilizing what is called as the common data model. The common data model is an approach that all content providers have to follow when they want to provide content to a business site. Now, as per this model, uh, the content provider should specify the role, of course, the apps that are assigned to this particular role, uh, other artifacts such as the spaces, pages involved, and finally, the content provider should also specify the relationships between these artifacts. So for example, which app is assigned to which role, etc. Now, if you think about it, this particular data model, uh, wherein you have a role and then the apps assigned to the role, spaces assigned to roles, etc. This is also followed when your content provider is an on-premise SAP system with Fury applications. And the same data model is also followed when our content provider is the uh, BTP HTML5 repository. The same, the model, this common data model is followed everywhere. Uh, this is the same model that we had followed in the previous videos, wherein we had seen how to set up the spaces and pages uh, layout uh, for our business site. In this video, our content provider is going to be the content package and the same model is going to be followed here as well. So now let's see how we will bring this common data model into play. We are going to specify the contents of my content package in the content.json file using the common data model approach. So this is a JSON file. Of course, we have our braces here. This package is going to contain a role. Let's call it senior reviewer. This is an entity of type role. So let's put in the type. 
So this is the first artifact in this package. This package is also going to contain an application or a UI5 integration card. Let's call it invoices. And the type of this artifact is, of course, card. So we we'll specify that here. All right, so far, so we have uh, two artifacts in this content package. One is an entity of type role and the other is an entity of type card. So let's proceed. Now the content descriptive file has declared that there is going to be a role, but we have not really set that role up. Uh, now, where do we do this? For that, let's go ahead and create a new folder under the root folder called as code. And then under that particular folder, let's create another folder called as source. Here under this folder, we are going to create a file which is called as role.json. Now inside this file, we'll describe the role in further detail. This is a JSON file, of course. We first put in the version. Then we'll put in some identification for this role. So the first attribute here is the ID. This is going to be the unique ID for the uh, for the role. It consists of the full ID of the um, content package, including the namespace, underscore, and then the name of the role. We put in an actual title for the role, then the entity type, which is of course the role. So once we are through with the identification, let's go ahead and specify the payload. Now this is going to be the application or the card that is going to be assigned to this role. Um, in our case, it is a card that we had created earlier. So let's put in the specification for that. So we say apps to indicate that these are the apps assigned to this role. They can be more than one. So this is like an array. So let's specify the square brackets. And then each of the app is a separate item with its own ID. Now here, when we specify the name of the app or the UI5 integration card, we use the full namespace. Uh, we use the full ID, including the namespace. So we say com.dunk.invoices.app. So that was the name of the app that we had specified earlier in the last video. So now we have set up the role in this file and uh, we have given it an ID uh, and we have also assigned a an integration card to this particular role. But we also need to inform the content.json that uh, this is the file, this role.json is the file where the role has been set up. So let's go back to the content.json file again. And then under the specification for the role, which is this one, let's specify the, the next attribute, which is called as the source. This is the source location where this role has been further defined. So let's put in the details for that. So we say from. This is the location of the folder. Now, considering this folder where the content.json file has been placed at the root, we specify the folder where the role description file has been placed. We had created a folder called as code and then under that source. This is the source folder. And then the actual file is called as role.json. So now my content descriptor file knows that this role, which has been declared, has been defined in further details in the file called as role.json, which is placed at this particular folder location. In a very similar fashion, let's now think about the card itself. So we have handled the role. Now let's think about the card. If you remember in the last video, we had learned that the manifest.json file is the heart of the integration card. And uh, we had created our uh, complete card by setting up the manifest.json file. So uh, to incorporate this card that we had created last time into the integration package, I am going to copy the complete source code of the manifest.json file. So just the source code of this manifest.json file, I'll copy it. And then in the content package, under the folder where I had placed my role definition, I'll create a new file called again as manifest.json. And then I'll paste the code of my UI5 integration card within this manifest.json. So now we have the definition of the UI5 integration card in a file called as manifest.json, which is placed within the complete content package. But the content descriptor file, the content.json, it does not know about this path. 
it knows that there is a, an artifact of uh, called as invoices which is of type card but it does not know where it has been located so just like we did for the role let's specify the source for this so we say source then we put in the from attribute which is the location of the folder we put in the path then we put in the location for the build package then the package location and then the name of the manifest file so you see the similarity for both the role and the card artifact we set them up in separate files uh, the role went into the roles.json file and the card went in the manifest.json file uh, and then in my content descriptor file in the content.json I described the content I had said that there is going to be a role and then there is going to be a card and I also specified where those roles and those cards are exactly placed so that's all we need to do for now here so let's go ahead and package this whole content package and the way to do that is right click on the manifest.json of your content package and not the manifest.json of your card all right so on the manifest.json of your content package right click and then say content package package all right so you see the packaging process is being run and when this packaging build process has run, you will have a zip folder in your project called as the package.zip. Right click on this folder and download it to your desktop. And now let's shift our attention to the channel manager within your SAP build work zone. Now, if you remember in the earlier videos we had learned, the channel manager allows you to manage your different content providers. And one of those content providers can be your content package, the one that we just downloaded. So let's click on new and then content package. So using the browse function, select the integration package that you had just downloaded to your desktop. Now under runtime destination, we have to specify the destination that this particular package is going to use. Now these are the destinations that we have set up in the, uh, in the B2B sub account. In our case, we will be using the uh, Northwind destination that points to the Northwind OData service. So let's select this destination. The other settings can be left as they are and then click on save. Now let's give this a minute to upload. Now once you see the status as created, let's go ahead and check the report using this link. Here you can see what all was created in the content manager as a result of this content package upload that we just did. So here we can see that uh, there were a total of uh, two artifacts uh, in the content package and there was one role and one application. This is what we had specified in our content descriptor file uh, when we were setting up the content package in the application studio. Now, of course, you can specify other uh, artifacts as well. For now, we are proceeding with this. Let's go back to the content manager. Now here you can also see the senior reviewer role that was uploaded as a result of what we just did. And this is the ID that we had specified uh, in our uh, content package. And the channel is of course uh, the content package that we had just uploaded. Now at the moment in BTP, if I scroll to the users and then see the role collections that have been assigned to me, um, I can see that I have the uh, senior purchaser and the goods movement manager. Now, this is what we had set up in the last video when we were learning about the group spaces and pages layout for the business site. And in my business site settings, I had set my viewing mode as the spaces and pages new experience. As a result, if I view my business site, um, at the moment, it looks something like this. I have two spaces, the external procurement and the goods movement. And uh, under the external procurement space, uh, I have two different pages and the pages have been split up into sections and the sections have been assigned some applications. Now under the space external procurement, we have the page order processing. And uh, under this particular page, I'll create a, I already have a section called purchase. I'll create a new section called as uh, invoice processing. And within that new section, I'll place the card, the UI5 integration card that I have just imported. So let's go back to the content manager and then within the order processing page, let's change to the edit mode. Let's put in a new section, provide a title for this section called as the invoice processing, and then click on add widget, select cards, 
And here you can see the card that was just uploaded along with the content package. Let's select this card. And now you can see that the card has been added in a section called as invoice processing on your page order processing. Let's save everything. Now, if you think about it carefully, you will notice that um, in the previous video, we had explicitly assigned the application that we had imported from the HTML5 repository of the sub account into the role that was created locally here in my content manager, right? So we had done an explicit application to role assignment. But this time around, we don't need to do this uh, application to role assignment explicitly. If we open the role that was just uploaded here, and that is the senior reviewer, you can see that this role cannot even be edited over here. You also notice the UI5 integration card has been assigned to this role uh, by default. Now, the information that this UI5 card is assigned to this role, um, it came from the role.json file that we had set up uh, when we were setting up our uh, content package. So that's why there is no need of this uh, application to role explicit assignment in this case. Now, if I open my business site and uh, I go to the order processing uh, page, I'll still not be able to see the new section and the UI5 integration card within it. Now, this is because uh, my business site does not know about this new role that is there in the content manager. And also my user ID does not have this particular role collection. So let's do that now. From the site directory, click on settings. Let's go to the edit mode. And then here under assign items, you will see the list of roles that have already been assigned to the business site and the ones that can be assigned extra. So here you see the senior reviewer role. This is not yet assigned to this particular business site. So by clicking on this plus, let's assign this role to the business site and then click on save. So now the business site knows that there is such a role that exists and this role is applicable for this business site. And then from the sub account, scroll down to users, select your user ID and then click on assign role collection. And then here you see the role that was uploaded with the content package. That is the senior review role. Let's assign this role collection to my user ID. So now if we go back to our business site and we go to the page order processing, here we will be able to see the new section that we had set up invoice processing and within that section we will be able to see the card that we had added now this particular card it was created in the business application studio and then along with the senior reviewer role it was packaged into the content package uh, the content package was then downloaded and uploaded back into the content manager on the build work zone and we had assigned the senior reviewer role to the business site and also to our user ID in the BTP sub account. Uh, there was no need to have done the uh, application to role assignment because that's already done uh, in the uh, role.json file that we had created. And so the card is now visible with our credentials. So this is how an integration card can be deployed onto your business site. In the next video, we will be looking to improve the look and feel of our cards uh, we'll understand the other card types that exist and explore the topic of integration cards in further detail. If you found the content of this video useful, uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel or dropping a like for this video. So until next time, take care and goodbye.